Welcome for those of you trickling in here. Um, we're so glad you are here today. We'll just wait another minute or so before folks arrive and then we'll get started with our presentation. But thank you all so much for being here today. I think the numbers are slowing down just a minute. I'll, I'll allow another 30 seconds, make sure everyone's able to join here for our webinar today. Um, but again, for those of you just trickling in, thank you so much for being here and we'll get started in just about 30 seconds or so. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll go ahead and get started here, but thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Ben Siegel. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm our, I'm our senior admissions counselor here at the University of Washington. Um, today, we'll be talking about admission to majors, but before we get into all of that, I want to allow my colleague to introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Burroughs. I'm Director of Advising Initiatives and Partnerships in Undergraduate Academic Affairs Advising, which is our largest pre-major advising office on campus. Excited to be with you today. Awesome, thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, so today we wanna to talk about admission to majors um, and then also kind of what it looks like to enter UW and navigate to your major itself. Um, and I see my last colleague is just joining in a second here. So I think we'll try to let them introduce themselves before we get started here. Um, Kayla, we just do very quick introductions. If you just be willing to let us know um, your name, pronouns and position, that would be amazing. Hi everyone, my name is Kayla Schuster Sasaki and I'm the recruiter for diversity and access for the Allen School, which is our computer science and engineering school um, here at UW and I use they them pronouns. Really excited to be here. Perfect, thanks so much. Um, so anyways, today we'll be talking about a little bit more about again, like admission to major majors here at the UW. And then again, we do have Kayla here who can talk a little bit more about direct admission to majors specifically for CS. Um, but as we are here on the University of Washington campus, we do want to start with a land acknowledgement here. Um, but we acknowledge that the University of Washington Seattle campus occupies the traditional land of the Coast Salish peoples, the land that touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Um, and with that being said, I do want to um, go through a few last quick housekeeping notes before we officially get started here. But this uh, um, session will be recorded, be posted on our website probably in a couple weeks or so here. Um, if any questions come up as we are presenting today, please use that Q&A function. Um, no need to use that chat. We may drop an occasional link in there, but that Q&A function will be your best place to ask questions. We'll present for a little bit and then allow plenty of time um, for roughly the second half to answer those questions, mostly verbally there. Um, but with all that being said, I will pass it off to Jocelyn here. Great, thank you, Ben. I'm just gonna do a quick overview of our major system here at the University of Washington. So we have, uh, the number is always flexible depending on what your uh, version of a major is, but about 180 majors on campus. So lots of majors to choose from. Um, when students come in, the vast majority of students come in as pre-majors and then declare or apply to a major later on. So I can explain that system a little bit, can advance the slide. Um, so there's different types of majors and different ways that students declare majors. So as I said, vast majority of students are coming into the University of Washington as pre-majors um, where they will, and this is our freshman our, our freshman population um, that are coming in as, I noticed a couple questions about transfer students. So that is a little bit of a different situation. But for our freshman students, most are coming in as pre-majors. You, when you declare a major, the majors, each major is in a different category of admission. So some of our majors um, are what we call open majors. So we can go to the open major slide. Um, these majors, you if you know what your major is and your major is an open major, you can just put that on your application and be admitted at the time you come into UW, or you can declare them at any time 
after once you're a student. As long as you're maintaining that 2.0 GPA, you can walk in the door of um, an open major, say, oceanography, and declare it at any time. The next category are our minimum requirement majors. So these majors have some sort of base level requirement. Typically, you'll be taking a few classes, meeting um, a GPA requirement, and then at that point, um, there's a process in which to declare the major. Um, so right here, there's some of those examples are going to be microbiology, political science, um, history. There's a lot of different um, minimum requirement majors here on campus. And then our last category is capacity constrained. So this means there are more uh, students who want to um, declare this major than there is space in this major. So there is an application process. And it, admission to this major is not guaranteed. Typically, it's going to be something like completing transcripts, writing a personal statement. Occasionally, there's a test. Each department is going to have their own unique application process. What we do in undergraduate academic affairs advising is help students navigate all these different types of majors, make sure they have a solid plan if they are interested in a capacity constrained major, make sure they have all the information they need about how to apply, as well as doing some parallel planning um, with other majors that are in different categories. Cool. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, so now that you got that overview about different types of majors here at the UW, I want to talk about how that shows up in the UW application process. Um, I will say for the most part, these slides are going to be focused on freshman admission to the UW. Um, during the Q&A portion, we can definitely dig into transfer admission a little bit more broadly as well. Um, but this is specific to the freshman application process here. So on the application, we ask students to list a first choice major on the application. So have to list that first choice major. Now we're going to ask you a question that says, are you open to studying something besides your first choice major? And if you answer yes to that question, you will have the opportunity to list a second choice major. Um, I think just generally speaking here, as part of our holistic review process here at UW, which essentially means we're looking at lots of different factors, looking at your academics, personal achievements, and characteristics. We also consider what majors you're interested in studying here at the UW and potentially kind of the capacity you have in those programs. So when you are thinking about what to list on your application, I truly encourage you to list what you're most passionate and interested in studying. But just keeping in mind that we have um, varying capacities in different majors here at the UW, and it's one of the many things that we may consider as part of our holistic review process. Um, major alone is never going to be the one make or break factor why a student's admitted, waitlisted, or denied to the UW, but again, one of those many factors that we consider. Um, but you can list specific majors on the application. You could also list one of our pre-major categories. So um, if students are admitted to the UW um, and they're not directly admitted to their major, which we'll get into in a second, they fall into one of our pre-categories or as a pre-major student, most likely. Um, when you're filling out the UW application, if you're a little bit unsure exactly what you want to study, you can list one of these pre-categories. Um, what I would encourage you to do, though, is try to be as specific as possible when you're filling out that application. List a specific first and second choice major. If you truly cannot do that, you can list one of those pre-categories, say I'm interested in like geography, history, political science, not really sure which one, I could list pre-social sciences as one of my first or second choice major options. That kind of helps us, allows us to understand if you're interested in the social sciences, not really sure which one there. Um, if you're truly undecided, truly have no idea, you could list pre-major, um, but I would say that would be a last option. I'd really encourage you to try to list specific majors first. If not, use those pre-categories. And last but not least, you could list pre-major if you want to communicate to us that you're open to a variety of majors. Um, but that's how it's going to show up on the application. You'll see those pre-categories as well as specific majors when indicating a first and second choice major on the application. Um, and then I, I will say, um, I'm going to speak very generally for like 10 seconds about direct admission here, um, then I will pass it off to Kayla to speak a little bit more specifically about computer science. Um, but as Jocelyn mentioned, the vast majority of majors here at UW do not directly admit freshmen. So the vast majority of students do come in here to the UW as pre-major undeclared students is sometimes another term that I know you may be familiar with as you're exploring colleges. So totally normal to come in here as a pre-major undeclared student. In fact, most majors do not offer direct admission. So you have to come in as a pre-major undeclared student. But we do have a very small handful of majors that offer direct admission, which essentially means that um, you potentially could be guaranteed a spot in that major at the same time you're admitted to the UW. Um, I'll pass it off to Kayla here to specifically talk about direct admission to computer science. I know we have lots of interest there and then I can kind of fill in any gaps about more general information about direct admission. Great, thank you. Um, 
So if you have been looking at UW for a while, you might have noticed that there's been a lot of changes in the Allen School in recent years. Um, one of them being that we have shifted to primarily uh, um, admitting students directly. So about 50% of our students come in through that pathway and the other pathways are gonna be transfer and current UW students. Um, for students who are coming in knowing that they definitely want to study either computer science or computer engineering, you're going to want to list that as your first choice major. Um, we do not have the capacity to look at students who've listed it as their second choice major, so you will only be considered for direct admission if you've listed that as your first choice major. Um, and because we are capacity constrained and competitive, that means that we have more students who are going to meet every single admission criteria than we could possibly admit. Um, so we have lots of students who are really strong and don't get into our program. And in that case, we don't recommend that you come to the University of Washington if you're admitted as a pre-major student, unless you know that you would be happy graduating with another major on campus. Um, there are lots of other majors on campus that have computing as a component. So um, those include things like informatics, applied and computational mathematical sciences, and a couple of the majors in the College of Engineering. Um, I'm sure that Ben will talk about this a little bit, but um, the College of Engineering is similar in that they have a direct admission process, but it's called direct to college. Um, and it's a bit more complicated than just being directly admitted into either CS or CE, where you know exactly what your major is going to be. Um, ben, are there other questions you want me to answer here too? Um, you, you know, I think that fills, fills in most of it there. I, I think just kind of the context I want to provide and Kayla alluded to a little bit earlier, like computer science, um, like the Allen School, as well as the College of Engineering are a little bit unique and that the majority of students in those programs come through the freshman direct process. Um, if you look at something like business, for example, they do a little bit of direct admission to their program, maybe about a third of the students in the Foster School of Business come through the freshman direct process, but the majority of slots are reserved for those students coming in as pre-majors and later applying to the program. So um, just when you are thinking about direct admission, Mission, know that something like computer science is different than something like business, different from something like neuroscience in terms of like the number of students and direct admit rates and how many slots are reserved for those pre-major students. Um, I know we like to make it nice and complicated for every major here at the UW, but that's why we're here today. Hopefully answer those more individualized questions and provide that information about the landscape as a whole. Um, I guess that's the concept on context on direct admission. Just a very small handful of majors offer direct admission. Most do not here at the UW. Um, anything else I'm missing on direct admission there, Kayla? Um, I guess just generally the big thing to know is if you aren't admitted through direct admission for the Allen School, um, we really don't encourage students to come here because the reason we shifted to this direct admission model that's different from most of the college um, is that we had a lot of students coming onto campus and either needing to transfer out or graduating with a major that they didn't want. Um, and so we just want to make sure that that's very clear up front. Perfect, thanks so much. Um, well, those are the, the just the basic information we wanted to provide to you all today, but we do want to open it up to questions and answers here. So I see we have lots of Q&As trickling in in that chat, um, and I'm going to start going through though, uh, through those questions and we'll answer those verbally. Um, I did want to toss up one last slide, um, our favorite dog here. This is Dubs. Um, he is a our, our mascot on campus. You'll see him walking around campus at football games and whatnot, but more importantly, you will see our email address for our Office of Admissions here. Um, so while we all kind of slightly work in different offices here, again, I'm representing the Office of Admissions. We're kind of a good um, first resource for students when they are exploring the University of Washington and applying. Um, so you're more than welcome to email us with any questions you have about the UW. Um, I'd say if we can't answer your questions, we're more than happy, happy to help direct you towards other folks on campus, such as Kayla, such as other departments, um, who can best support with those questions. But just want to leave that up there for a second so you know how to get in touch with us here. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so I can help manage this Q&A just a little bit better here. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna start asking some questions here. Um, ben, but, while you're working on that, um, I did notice there were some questions about which majors are capacity constrained and which majors are open. Um, I, I don't think I have the power to put a link into the chat, but I did put a, um, message you a link of um, if you Google UW list of majors, there it, there is a key on there that shows what majors are capacity constrained, minimum, and open. So that's a really easy way um, to tell what majors are what. Um, the other thing is that I think there is some conflation in that chat, um, in the Q&A, of what, is, what does direct mean versus capacity constrained, and what are these applications? So. 
there is a direct process, which means you put on your freshman application, um, and this is again specific to freshmen, um, you put on your freshman application uh, that you want to the College of Engineering or the Allen School or the Foster School of Business, um, and you will be considered for direct admission into those departments. Um, so there's that process. If you are admitted and choose to come to UW as a pre-major, then you enter being a pre-major and navigating this major system where there's open majors, minimum and capacity constrained. And then your application to those majors happen later on once you are prepared for those um, for those majors. So for example, if you come into the University of Washington as a pre-major, you decide you wanted to apply to the Foster School, typically you spend your first two years completing the prerequisites, apply at the end of your sophomore year, and then at that time, enter the Foster School of Business. So hopefully that helps explain a little bit the difference between the direct process and the capacity constrained process. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. And uh, I did drop that link in the chat for everyone to look over that list of majors. Um, you can see the symbols there for open minimum requirement and capacity constraint there. Um, but anyways, I'm going to answer one quick question as I see we had a few trending ones. And then, Kayla, I think I'll ask you a question more so around transfer admission for CS, maybe kind of transfer admission in general. Um, but questions about kind of different UW campuses, UW Bothell, Tacoma, Seattle. Um, I'd say UW Bothell, Tacoma, and Seattle, all UW campuses all offer a UW degree. Going to be a little bit different in terms of like size, location, and some differences in majors. Uh, I will say you have to apply to each campus separately. And if you have questions about Bothell and Tacoma, I'd highly encourage y'all to connect directly with their admissions counselors and their admissions offices as well. Um, we can only speak more generally about it here at the UW Seattle campus. Uh, but again, slight differences in terms of some of those majors and a good thing to consider as part of your college search process. Um, but anyways, Kayla, I see we had a question kind of about I'm um, applying as a transfer student. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit just very briefly about what it looks like to apply as a transfer student to the UW and specifically for um, a major like CS or CE that has a separate departmental application. Yeah, um, so as Ben just mentioned, it's a little bit different depending on the major that you are applying for. Um, for CS and CE specifically, you will actually submit two completely separate applications. Um, so the first one is going to go to the UW Office of Admissions and they are going to review it and um, you won't hear anything from them um, until later. And then you will submit your Allen School Departmental Supplemental Application, which you will hear us refer to just as the departmental application most of the time. Um, and that one is going to ask four questions. Three are optional, one or three are required. One is optional, but we highly recommend that you do all four. Um, and there's an activity section. So it's pretty similar, but um, one of the things that students don't always know that's really important to know is that you can actually repeat as much information between those two applications as you want to. Um, so we are never going to read theirs and they will never read ours. You will hear from the Allen School first. Um, and so if you've been admitted, it is very, very likely that you will also be admitted by the Office of Admissions. If you haven't, you will still be considered as a pre-major student or for a second choice major if you've listed one on the application, um, but there will be two completely separate reviews. Great. Thanks so much, Kayla. And as I said, mostly today we want to talk about freshman admission, but just want to give you a little slice of what transfer admission could look like. It's much so, much more so about being prepared for the major, like having the prerequisites applying directly to the major, whereas freshman admission, um, for the most part, is a little bit more general in terms of what we're looking for there. Um, I will say if you're interested in applying as a transfer student, I'd highly encourage you all to connect directly with the department as well. And I'll pass it off to you, Jocelyn, for more context, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, there is a great resource called Transfer Thursdays that admissions and UA advising and advisors across campus participate in. So please do access um, Transfer Thursdays if you are a transfer student. One uh, other thing that I noticed as a trend coming through the Q&A is how do I know if, my, if the major I'm interested in has direct? Uh, I was wondering if you could pop in the link to the My Major tool. Um, I think that's a really great way to find out, is it capacity constrained? Is it, does it have direct, all these different pieces that we're chatting about, um, the My Major tool kind of gives a nice overview of. 
Yeah, definitely. I just dropped a, a link to Transfer Thursday there. So if you are a transfer student, um, I'd highly encourage you all to check out that. Um, and as a quick little side note, as I know we had some questions in the chat about this, um, for those of you who are maybe doing Running Start, which um, is a program in Washington, students are duly enrolled at a Washington State Community College and also at their high school, um, you are still applying as a freshman applicant if you're doing Running Start. So just wanted to clarify that piece. You are not considered a transfer applicant until you take college credit following high school graduation. So Running start students, still a freshman applicant. Transfer students would be students who've graduated high school and are taking college credit um, after high school graduation in short. Um, Jocelyn, I'm gonna ask you one more question and then I'll toss in some um, some of those other links that you mentioned as well. But as I, I was wondering if you could just speak to what double majoring here at UW looks like. Sure, so uh, oftentimes students will double major here at the University of Washington. And essentially what that means is the student is taking the required credits for two different majors. Whether a student can double major or not is highly dependent on the majors. So maybe they are interested in two majors that are on our lower credit. So our majors can range from being 50 credits to 100 credits. So doing two 100 credit majors is probably going to be less realistic than doing two 50 credit majors. So it can really vary depending on which majors it is. And that's the conversation we as advisors love to have with students is how can I fit all my interests into my degree? It's the great thing about um, a degree at the University of Washington is it's really flexible and students get a lot of choice in the classes they can take and how they sort of build their own experience and journey. So that's one of my favorite things to talk to students about is, okay, you want to double major in these subjects. Why do you want to do that? Is that realistic? If not, how can we still make sure that you're getting what you need um, out of those subjects? Maybe that's a minor, maybe that's a certificate, maybe that's some um, experience outside of class. There's a lot of great options to study multiple things here. Cool, thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, I, I'm seeing some questions in the chat about um, direct admission to the College of Engineering. So I wanna cover that really briefly as well. Um, I know we talked about direct admission to computer science a little bit. Um, for direct admission to the College of Engineering, if you list any engineering major as your first choice major on the application, you're automatically considered for direct admission to the College of Engineering. Um, here at the UW, we, not, we do not directly admit students to specific engineering majors. All students who are directly admitted to the College of Engineering would enter as engineering undeclared students. And essentially, that means you are guaranteed an engineering major here at the UW, um, and then about 95% of students, they are placed into one of their top two choices here. So while you're not guaranteed that specific one, it's not like you were just placed in a random one. You really get to explore your first year here at the UW, connect with other students, be part of an engineering freshman interest group, professors, research, student groups within engineering to really explore what your interests are in engineering. So at the end of your first year, when you apply for placement, you've had that opportunity to explore your interests and so you um, know what you want to do within engineering. It's maybe my best way to put that. But again, big takeaway for you all, just be sure to list any engineering major uh, besides computer engineering as your first choice major on the UW application. By doing so, you're automatically considered for direct admission to the College of Engineering. Um, I just wanted to cover that really quickly there. Um, Jocelyn, I see another question here kind of about, um, or sorry, was there something you want to fill in there on engineering? Yep. I, I was going to ask you a credit um, question about like transfer credit. So if students are bringing in like AP, IB, say running start dual enrollment credit, um, I guess what does that look like when students come in as say like a pre-major student and how can that help them, um, I'd say access their major? Yeah, I think that is a great question and something I'm talking to students a lot right now we're doing in orientation for our newest freshmen. So looking at all their credits, we have a great tool called degree audit. So when students come in uh, to the university, they can transfer in their credits and then they can look at how those credits count to the towards their degree. Uh, admissions also has a great tool on their website where you can see how AP IB credits will transfer in if you're taking some courses at a Washington State Community Co College. There's something called the Transfer Equivalency Guide, which can help you see what classes you'll at UW your community college classes will transfer towards. In general, I would give another fun it depends um, answer to how that helps you prepare for your major. So some students have been very focused on their college major for a very long time. And in running start, right, they take all of the prereqs to their major. They take the majors chemistry series and major biology series. 
and then they're ready to go for biology. That is probably the small, a smaller percentage of our students. Most of the time, our students have a smattering of credits that really help them work towards their general education courses. So they will have classes from AP, IB, whatever it may be, that will go towards their general education credits um, and help give them just a little bit more cushion and flexibility as they enter into their time at University of Washington to explore and prepare for their major. So again, you know, sometimes it can really, uh, they can have classes that go towards their major. Maybe they want to major in math and they have credit for calculus. Great. They can jump into calculus too right away. Um, other times that credit is going to be more general. Cool. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Um, Kayla, I, I think I see that you indicated you're hoping to answer a question live here. I think I forgot where it was, but um, let me see if I can find it again. Do you know the question I'm referring to, Kayla? Yes, um, it was, are there a set number of seats for capacity constrained majors? Um, and the answer is it's going to depend on the year. So um, each department will admit a certain number of students each year. They will review how much room they have for incoming students. Um, and so that's how the decision is going to be made on how many students they will admit for the next year. So there's no real way to predict it. Thanks so much, Kayla. I think I might um, add something on top of that, if that's OK. So there are different majors that are sort of different levels of capacity constraints. So as we've mentioned, things like the Foster School of Business um, are going to be fairly capacity constrained, whereas other majors like biology that are listed as capacity constrained, most of the, the vast majority of students who apply to biology will be admitted to biology. And so I know that does make it a little bit more confusing for folks, um, but don't look at, I encourage you not to look at capacity constrained and think, oh my gosh, there's no seats because there are a good, a good number of capacity constrained majors that are still have re reasonable admit rates. So biology, psychology, communication, they're capacity constrained, but their admit rates are going to be much higher and the majority of students who apply are likely going to be admitted. Dep that, of course, as Kayla mentioned, it depends on the application cycle. Um, some, some quarters uh, are just more popular and going to be more ca capacity constrained and others um, are going to be less. So um, so just wanted to put that out there, that it's not always highly, highly capacity constrained. Perfect. Um, I'm going to try to answer a quick question here about um, listing first and second choice major and how that may impact general admission to the UW. Um, as I did talk about, we asked students to list a first and second choice major on the application itself. Um, I will say we do take that into consideration as part of our holistic review process, um, kind of looking at what students want to study and the capacity we have in those majors. Um, as I did mention a little bit earlier, major alone is not going to make or break a student's application. It's not going to be that one make or break factor, just one of those many little things that we consider. Um, I think it's always this tricky balance that like, yes, I encourage students to truly list what they're interested in studying on that application. If you are only interested in, say, two or three different capacity constrained majors here at the UW, it's just important to keep that in mind when you are applying to the UW and potentially considering your college decision as to what's the best fit for yourself there. Um, that being said, though, the one little more specific piece of advice I do want to offer is especially for engineering and computer science, if you list one of those as your first choice major on the application um, and you're open, more generally interested in the UW and open to studying a wide variety of majors, um, I would encourage you not to list computer science and engineering as your second choice major. Um, as we talked about a little bit earlier, you are not considered for direct admission to your second choice major. Um, and just because computer science and engineering admit the majority of their class freshmen direct, um, we want to make sure students have a viable second choice option listed on the application as well. So again, really specific here, but if you're interested in studying computer science or engineering, go ahead and list one of those as your first choice major on the application, but please be sure to list a major outside of computer science or engineering if you are open to studying a wide variety of majors here at the UW and are just more generally interested in the UW as a whole. Um, so I know just some food for thought there um, as you are thinking about what to list on the application itself. Um, let me see. Um, Jocelyn, I had another question for you, and I'm going to read it off here. Sorry, Kayla, did you have something to add? Um, I was just going to add, there's a bunch of questions about second choice majors specifically for CS majors. Um, and you mentioned this, but I just want to make it very, very clear. Um, so when you 
are considered for a second choice major, you are not considered for direct admission, um, but you can definitely be admitted to the University of Washington without a direct to major offer from your first choice major. Perfect, and I think that leads in well to the next question. I'm gonna read it word for word here, and this is for you, Jocelyn. Um, the question is, are most majors not direct admit, meaning if you join a major later um, on, will you be behind those who started through direct admission? Yeah, no, you won't be behind. So many of these departments that have direct admission, so business, biochem, whatever it is, um, typically those students are still going to be taking those same general education prerequisite courses their first two years. So you're not going to be behind as a pre-major. It's just that you will also be um, applying to the major. Um, but again, it doesn't really have to do with, you're not going to get a start on um, the upper division curriculum way faster. Um, it all mostly depends on your credits and what credits you're bringing in and how close you are getting to having the prerequisite course work necessary to start in that upper division curriculum. Perfect. Um, I'm going to try to tackle a couple of quick questions here about business direct admission and also like how to incorporate majors, say in the essays. Um, but really quickly, um, Foster School of Business, they do directly admit students, um, kind of like our other direct admit majors. If you're interested in studying business here at the UW, be sure to list business as your first choice major on the application. By doing so, you're automatically considered for direct admission to Foster. So when and if you're admitted to the UW, we'll let you know at that exact same, the exact same time if you're admitted to UW directly in a Foster or just admitted to UW as a pre-major student. Um, if you come in as a pre-major student, you take the business prereqs and then later apply to the major. Um, especially for business and other majors too, oftentimes students ask me, um, in order to be a competitive applicant for direct admission or just a competitive, competitive applicant to UW in general, um, do I need to have, say, business experience? Do I need to have computer science experience in order to be directly admitted to my major? And the answer is no. Um, I'd say if you have business or computer science or um, any academic experience related to that program and that um, aligns with what you're writing about in your personal statement, short response essay, activity log, absolutely you can incorporate it in, that in there. But for direct admission to majors here at UW, it's based on the holistic review process. So when I say holistic review, we're looking at your academics, what classes you've taken throughout high school, how much you're challenging yourself, as well as just general personal achievements and characteristics. We're not looking for um, specific, like all the computer science prerequisites are done. We're still looking for general traits and characteristics around like leadership, depth of involvement, family commitments. Like those are all things that we consider holistically about our review process and it will ultimately allow a student to be a stronger applicant to the UW and a stronger applicant for direct admission to their major. Um, Kayla, I'm going to let you like answer maybe the back end of this question, but I know a lot of folks ask like, do I have to take computer science at my high school or like um, know how to code in order to be a direct admit to computer science? No, you do not. Um, if you have computing experience, you're welcome to talk about it in your application, but that isn't going to make or break anyone's application. Um, and it's not really strongly considered as a factor at all. Um, the thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is making sure that you are taking a really well-rounded curriculum in high school, especially for direct admit um, freshmen, because the only people reviewing your application is going to be the Office of Admissions. And what they are looking for is a student who's really strong across all of their subject areas. And a lot of times, especially with Running Start students, we see students who only take math and science in their senior year. But you really want to make sure that you're taking all of your college academic distribution requirement areas for all four years if you can. Cool. Thanks, Kayla. Um, Justin, we had a question about like, pre-med at the UW, pre-health. I was wondering if you could talk about what it looks like to be a pre-health, pre-med student here at the UW and if that is a major. Yeah, so pre-med, pre-health is not a major here at the University of Washington. Med schools and most health professional schools don't actually have a preference on major. They really are looking that you're completing the prerequisites and that you're and they want to see you studying something you're interested in. So you can major in dance and be pre-med. You can major in a social science. Actually, statistics for the MCAT, which is the test that you have to take before applying to, to medical school, shows that humanities majors do just as well on the MCAT as uh, as STEM majors do. So you can choose whatever major you want, and then you work with your advisor to uh, to build that into your curriculum. So if you're deciding to major 
in say sociology and you are pre-med, we will help you build in those science prereqs that will um, prepare you for medical school. Now, there are some majors that are um, challenging to be pre-med and do because they're so high credit. So things like design is one that I think of that's probably the most challenging to be pre-med and major in design. But the vast majority of majors um, will pair just fine with all of the med school prereqs. Awesome. Thanks, Jocelyn. Um, I saw a really quick question here about our application platform. Well, we're mostly talking about admission to majors, as you do have to list those on the application. I figured I'd cover it very briefly. Um, but as part of our freshman application, um, we intend to offer the common application starting for freshmen applying for autumn 2023. So if you're going into your senior year of high school, that is you. Um, we also plan to offer like a, a UW specific our own application platform. And you're welcome to use either common app or the UW specific application platform. We have no preference towards one or the other. Um, and you can find the links for those posted on our website on September 1st, which is when our application opens, and November 15th is our one and only application deadline. So saw a question here about regular decision deadline, early action. Here at the UW, we don't have early action, don't have early decision, no is your one and only application deadline there. Um, Great, Jocelyn, I have another question for you, um, and I keep on losing my place here, but I think the general line of thought um, is kind of like, what is it, um, Kind of what does like advising look like here at the UW? Like coming as a pre-major student, I don't know what I want to study. Um, what are resources are available for me to determine like what classes I should take? When do I register for classes? That process as a whole. Yeah, so when students come into the university as a pre-major student, they meet with their advisor at advising and orientation. Sometimes that's individual, sometimes that's as a group, but in general, they meet their advisor at orientation. We have two types of advisors at University of Washington. We have our general advisors. So those are the folks in my office, as well as our Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity Educational Opportunity Program, our athletics advisors, our honors advisors. We are all general advisors. So we help students navigate this major system. We help them think about who they are, what they care about, what they wanna study, and then help them design a strategic academic plan um, to meet those goals through the offerings at University of Washington. The other type of advisor are departmental advisors. So these advisors are experts in that particular major. So they know a lot about the upper division curriculum, opportunities within the department, once students are ready or once students declare into a major, they move from a general advisor to their departmental advisor. There is some overlap, though. Um, both general advisors and departmental advisors will help students prepare for majors. So um, oftentimes, if students have very specific questions about major applications that really gets into the nitty gritty, I'll go ahead and send them over to the department to get that specific answer. Departments have information sessions, application workshops, all sorts of resources for pre-major students to help them prepare for that major. So really, it's a partnership. I like to tell my students, you're going to have multiple advisors here at the University of Washington, that's a good thing because we all have our areas of expertise and we can all we can both help you plan and prepare um, for a successful journey through college. Great. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, I will say I came into UW as a pre-major student, used that UAA advising. That's how I really was able to explore here at the UW, figure out what I ultimately wanted to study here. Um, so can't emphasize that enough. You do have that advising resources starting at advising and orientation before even coming into the UW. Um, let me see, I'm trying to sort through questions. I, I know I'm maybe these are things we already covered a little bit, um, but again, in the link that I dropped where it says freshman admission to majors, you can see which majors are direct admit or not. And again, you're only considered for direct admission to your first choice major. So, I mean, say I want to study like computer science and business, you can only be considered for direct admission to one of those. So that is something that um, I know gets a little tricky um, and when you're thinking about what do I want to study in college? Um, you have to make that decision when you're applying as a senior in high school there, but go ahead and list your first choice major there on the application. Um, say if you're direct limited to CS here, at the UW, but decide you don't want to do it later on, you're always welcome to try to um, switch into business later on, say add a business minor, lots of different pathways to pursue your multiple interests there. Um, let me see. Um, I think, Chelsea, if I might toss another question your way. Um, the question was like, what if I want to come into the UW um, and my major is capacity constrained and I don't in, get into that major the first time I apply? Um, Kind of what advising and resources um, does your office provide um, and what do you tell students who are not able to get into their major the first time around? 
Yeah, so typically we work with students to uh, create a holistic plan. And when I say holistic plan, we want to help students be as prepared for that capacity constrained uh, major that they might be interested in as possible by using their resources, going to these workshops, figuring out how to put forth the best application. Um, many times, uh, Departments will allow students to reapply. Um, so sometimes students won't get in on their first try, but maybe they'll do a second try. Now, of course, um, reapplication is great to do in consultation with that department and with the general advisor. Additionally, from the very beginning, we like to build parallel plans for students um, that help them reach their goals. So let's say a student's interested in neuroscience, right? Um, neuroscience is one of our more capacity constrained majors. It is a lovely major. And there are a lot of great things to do if you don't get into neuroscience. So uh, biology and neuroscience have a ton of overlap in curriculum. Psychology and neuroscience also have a big overlap. Many of the neuroscience professors or psychology professors, right? So a lot of times students will maybe double major in bio and psych. We also have a great neuroscience club on campus where you can learn a lot about neuroscience. Um, so we do encourage students to think broadly about less about the major and what will be on their transcript and more about what they want to learn, what knowledge and skills they want to walk away with, and think about all the different ways you can get the, that knowledge and those skills, because oftentimes there's more than one route to the, those goals than just the one particular major. Um, and that is often one of my favorite things to do with students is to do that planning whether or not I think they're going to get in to a major because it really helps students step back and think about what do I want to learn and why do I want to do this major anyway. Oftentimes students come into the university with blinders of like this is the only major this is capacity constrained means good open means bad right. We are nationally renowned for our oceanography program those folks are getting some good jobs, right? It's an open major, walk right in. There is there is not, capacity constraint is not good, open is not bad. And we do wanna help students think through that and think about what they wanna learn and get the skills that they wanna come away with. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, let me see, I'm gonna cover really quickly about the honors program here. And then Kayla, I saw you were typing some answers to questions, but if there's any of those that you'd wanna answer verbally as well, that's great. I was gonna to toss one or two your way too. Um, but for the honors program here at the UW, we offer an interdisciplinary honors program. So honor, honors is not a major. You could major in anything here at the UW and still be part of the interdisciplinary honors program. In order to apply to the honors program, you're gonna check a little box on the freshman application that says, I wanna be considered for honors. And then you're gonna write two specific honors essays there. Um, if you're admitted to UW, you'll be informed not too long afterwards if you're admitted to honors or not. And again, the honors here at the UW um, and Joss maybe can correct me a little bit here, but most students will take like, you know, one honors class a quarter roughly and it's designed to satisfy general um, graduation education requirements here at UW. So no way does it like sidetrack you from your major or your minor. Um, those classes are designed to satisfy general graduation requirements. Um, average class size for honors is roughly about 25. And I'd say like in high school, oftentimes students are like, I'm going to do honors because I want to do the most rigorous form of curriculum. I'd say here at the UW, honors is more so about like the, the structure, um, very small class sizes, kind of discussion, seminar style base, very interdisciplinary. Um, you're with students across a wide variety of majors across campus, classes taught by professors from all across campus. So it's more so about like the structure and content of honors is what makes it a good fit for students. Um, but Jocelyn, any more information about um, honors and what it looks like to be an honors student here at the UW? I think you described it well. Uh, the other option for honors is what we call departmental honors. So some students um, won't, maybe they don't want to do the interdisciplinary honors. That doesn't feel like a good fit, but they live and breathe a subject, right? Let's say your student is all about math. They wake up thinking about math and they just want to study math. Departmental honors is a great way to really dig in deep into a subject that you might be passionate about. So that's just another option for honors that's a little different than the interdisciplinary program. And they can, students could do both, but they could also do one or the other. Great, thanks so much. Um, Kayla, I think I, I'll ask you like two quick CS questions. I think first one um, is like, what can students do to be the most competitive possible CS applicant? Maybe I'm like a junior, senior in high school right now. What can I do to be most competitive for direct admission to computer science? Yeah, of course. 
Um, before I get to that question, there's one thing I really want to clear up that I've been seeing a lot in the questions. Um, so students are considered for the Allen School, um, regardless of whether they've listed computer science or computer engineering as their first choice major, we consider all students in one pool for both of those programs. And we do not have any form of quota or anything between the two. So it usually ends up being that 80 to 90% of our students are CS majors, just because that's the more flexible of the two degree degrees. But we do not actually care which one you've listed as long as you list an Allen School major as your first choice. The confusing thing here is electrical and computer engineering is actually housed in the College of Engineering, not the Allen School. So computer engineering and electrical and computer engineering are two completely separate majors. So I just wanted to make sure that that was really clear. For um, students applying to the Allen School, and I think this is kind of broadly applicable for anyone applying, but we see it especially with CS majors. Um, when you are writing your application, you want to really make sure that you are focusing on yourself. CS majors tend to want to prove that they know a lot about CS. So we see lots of students who will write this beautiful essay about everything they can tell you about artificial intelligence. This is going to be read by an admissions counselor who does not care about artificial intelligence. They want to get to know you. So um, one thing I recommend is doing something called the highlighter test. So if you are not sure if you've written enough about yourself, go through your essay, highlight every line that is talking about you and do not highlight anything that is talking about something that is not you. Most of your essays should be highlighted because they're going to be looking for information about you, what your life is like. They're, do not want to know that much about the major. You can explain why you want to study that and experiences from your life that have influenced that decision, um, but you don't want to focus on a specific subtopic within the field. Um, so that's probably one of the most common mistakes we see for CS majors. In general, to make yourself most competitive, just getting the best grades that you can and making sure you're taking a well-rounded curriculum and not focusing too heavily in computer science or science and math. Um, but also taking those classes and performing well in them and um, just making sure that's not the only thing that you're taking. Great, thanks so much, Kayla. Um, let me see, I think, uh, Jocelyn, I'll toss another question your way here. Um, the, qu the question was about like concentrations within majors. I was just wondering if you could speak to what that looks like, um, maybe partly from an admission standpoint, but also um, just from like an academic advising and um, student pathway standpoint. Yeah, so typically, so there's concentrations and options within majors, and really this is just uh, designed as sort of a collection of classes that helps students focus their studies in a particular area. For the majority of um, majors, which once you're here as a pre-major student and you're applying to the major, for the majority of majors, there's not going to be a difference in capacity constrainedness of those options. There's maybe a few exceptions and students will declare which option or concentration they want once in the major. So um, it really is just a way that departments can say, hey, look, you can study this specific part of this discipline and this is how you do it. Or you can study this part of this specific discipline and this is how you do it. Um, so for the va vast majority of majors thinking about business, thinking about biology, it really is not something that you have to um, be specifically competitive for one or the other. It's just a way for students to focus their studies a little bit more. Most majors also just have a general option where students can kind of a la carte choose what the classes are within that major. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, let me see, I saw just a few questions and I know folks are trickling in now kind of, kind of regarding like that application timeline and who's considered for direct admission and whatnot. Um, again, the first day the UW application opens up is September 1st. Our one and only deadline is November 15th. As it relates to major, since that is our focus today, um, again, you're automatically considered for direct admission to your first choice major, not considered for direct admission to that second choice major, but we do want to get a general sense of what you're interested in studying, so be sure to list that on the application as well. Um, let me see. Kayla, I, I think you touched on this a little bit in your last question, but I think we just had a, a question regarding like CS admission statistics. Um, I know this can be a little bit daunting, um, but I guess like specific to CS, but also if you have any insight um, for folks who are seeing those admission statistics, statistics and um, kind of how to gauge those when thinking about applying to the UW. Yeah, so um, 
this question was asked very early on and I put a link in the Q&A so you can scroll up to the top and find the link there. Um, you can also just Google Allen School High School students and you will find it. So we don't put the percentages up, but we do put the number of applicants and the number of admitted students up. It's updated on November 1st each year. And um, so you will only be able to see the data for the most recent year. Um, that being said, for Washington residents, we had about a 27% admit rate for this past year. Um, and I would encourage you to kind of note that number, but also note that the past few years have been a very, very strange time for everyone. And we are going to see some fluctuations in admission numbers. Um, so they do not necessarily predict what our next year is going to look like. Um, but again, it is pretty competitive. So around a quarter of Washington residents, sometimes a little bit higher, is are going to be admitted. Um, we also do have a very strong priority for Washington state residents. Um, so that means for international and out of state students, the admit rates are much lower, closer to 5%. Um, they vary a little bit year to year, but they are going to be much more competitive. Thanks so much, Kayla. Um, Jocelyn, I know you've covered different aspects of this, but I feel like the way this question was asked directly, um, I, I think is, is really important. But the question was, can you take classes that do not align with your major or majors in this case here? Yes, you can. Uh, in a couple of different ways. One, we the way that we design our general education requirements gives students a ton of flexibility. So, and at very from the very beginning, we encourage students to think about how do they use their general education to explore their interests that are outside of their major. So that's one way that students can take classes not related to their major. Another way is through their elective electives. Most um, students are going to have a good chunk of elective space that gives them time to take classes they're interested in that aren't related to their major, maybe just gives them some time and space for that exploration. Um, so those two ways are ways that students can take classes that are outside of their major interests that they just want to explore in college. One of the University of Washington's goals for students is to have this appreciation for the range of human achievement, right? And so we want all of our students to experience uh, classes from multiple disciplines and give students a ton of flexibility and space to do that. Yeah, maybe a, a slight personal anecdote. Um, here at the UW, I think some of my favorite classes were ones that I somewhat had to take um, to satisfy general education requirements, but I was able to locate classes that I was really interested in in order to satisfy those requirements. Reflecting back on my UW experience, I feel like those are some of the most memorable classes in my mind. Um, wasn't what I necessarily came to UW for, wasn't related to my major, um, but something that kind of sticks with me is, um, I don't know, as I do my job and also just live my life in general, I guess. Um, anyways, I'm going to go through one quick little bit of housekeeping and then um, ask Jocelyn one more question and Kayla one more question here, if that's all right. But I know lots of questions about recordings, how to access these recordings, just kind of connect with the Office of Admissions moving forward. Um, we've had this Washington Wednesday series throughout the summer. Um, we're in the process of getting those recordings up on the website soon, um, just putting some finishing touches on captions and whatnot. Um, they'll be up on our admissions YouTube playlist and they'll also be posted on our on-demand videos on our admissions website. So keep an eye out for those. We're in the process of getting those up in the next few days, hopefully here. Um, we have more Washington Wednesdays coming up later throughout the summer, so um, a few more, um, and they're going to be covering a variety of different admissions related topics. So I know I probably skipped over some questions today as I'm trying to keep it more specific to majors, but please feel free to continue to attend our other Washington Wednesdays and other events moving forward here. Um, Jocelyn, I'm going to ask you one more question, and then Kayla, I know there's a variety of different CS related questions. If that's all right with you, I'll let you pick the one that you feel like is most applicable or we haven't quite covered yet. Um, but anyways, Jocelyn, I guess my question for you is more about like graduate school. So I know it's not as much about like academic advising, but I guess what does it look like to come into the UW um, and what resources are there for students who are hoping to prepare to further their education at that master's or doctorate level? Yeah, so there's lots of great resources. Uh, one is, again, I've talked about sort of the flexibility of the degree. Um, as undergraduate advisors, we do help students think about how to prepare for grad school. If there are any courses necessary to work into their undergraduate time, we can help them schedule those in. Additionally, for someone who is looking sort of the academic route, 
big benefit of coming to University of Washington is all of the research opportunities. So ton of ways to get involved in research, which if you are looking at sort of that PhD route, that can be the most beneficial thing is having that research on your resume and really being able to dig into subjects and that there are just a ton of opportunities there. Um, Additionally, our career center is set up to help students think about, okay, I think I want to do grad school, but do I need to do grad school? Should I do grad school? What grad school should I do? All of those questions that students are grappling with as they reach the end of their undergrad career, both advisors within the de particular departments and our career advisors can help them work through that and think about, is there anything I need could be doing now? Um, other great opportunities are just the opportunities for outside of the classroom, right? What experiences can you be getting? What is the sort of hands-on learning you can be doing? And we have whole departments to help students find those opportunities. So lots of ways and support um, for preparing for grad graduate school. Awesome, thanks so much, Jocelyn. Um, Kayla, I, I am gonna ask you a, a question. I, I know I said I wasn't, but I guess my question to you, and then feel free to fill in with anything else you wanna pass along, is that we've had a lot of questions from students about specific departments. Um, and I was just wondering if you could speak to like how students can get more information to say about departments or like CS specifically, seen as you're representing them today. Yeah, um, it depends a bit on the department, but for CS specifically, we have our own website um, and lots and lots and lots of different pages on that website that are all there to support you. Um, the best way to get started, we have something called our apply page, which will go through all of the different pathways to admission, both for undergraduates and for graduate students. And then also just a bunch of other resources like UAA admissions, um, everything that you could possibly need on campus. We have links to a lot of those on our website through that apply page. And then that page will also direct you to our pages about our program, um, different things that you can do to get involved in high school, um, different ways that you can connect with me, all of that fun stuff. So definitely go check out our website. And most departments on campus do have either their own website or a website within UW's page, um, just depending on their resources and how well their information integrates with the UW website. Um, does that answer that question? Do you need anything yeah. else there? That's, that's perfect. I appreciate that, Kayla. Was there anything else CS related you were seeing in the chat that you wanted to touch on before we wrap up? Um, there was one part of a CS question that I think would be helpful for everyone, and that was, um, does it matter when you submit your application and do we have early decision or early action? The answer is we do not have either and it does not matter when in the application window you submit. So if you submit on day one or the day it closes, you will have exactly the same chance. We don't recommend submitting the day it closes just because there could be tech issues or something comes up. So try and get it in a few days before that deadline, um, but it will not affect your admission decision. Um, and then just generally how to get in touch with me. Um, I will put out my email in the chat, but we also for the CS people out there have um, monthly info sessions, you can meet with our student ambassador team so you can meet one on one with a current student and ask them about it. Um, and we also have lots of different programs to support both incoming students and students once you're here so you can learn about all of those on our website. Um, and we've been talking a lot about how competitive the major is so one thing I do want to highlight is that we do have a program, we have a couple of programs for students with really high personal scores and slightly lower academic scores. Um, so you would find out about that when you receive your admission decision, but there are alternative pathways. So I don't want anyone to feel like I definitely can't get in and I shouldn't try. You should definitely, definitely try. Um, I will put my email in the chat now. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to drop a few last links in the chat as well. Um, I know there were lots of questions today we were not able to get to, so I put the contact information for the Office of Admissions there. And then the other one I want to toss in right before you wrap up for our Husky preview event. And that's going to be this upcoming fall, um, just a few days in October there. Um, you know, we are very general in terms of the information we're providing here. It's just part of general admission to majors. If you want to check out that Husky preview link, you can see that there's um, presentations by lots of different departments from around campus. So it can really get to the source, ask business, ask pre people from the college and the environment your questions there. Um, but anyways, thank you all so much for being here today. I'm excited to share a little bit more information about admission to majors with you all. Um, thank you so much to Jocelyn and Kayla for 
for being here and sharing your expertise. Um, again, this is recorded. We'll get it up on the website in a few weeks here. If you all have any additional questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us here in the Office of Admissions. We're happy to be of support with those questions. But thank you all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your night and we'll talk to you soon. Ben, I realized I can't send a message to everyone. Can you just copy and paste my email for him? Yeah, of course. Here you go. Come, coming in for those of you who are still here. Sorry about that. All right. Anyways, well, hope you all have a great night um, and go dogs.